Good morning, Robert L. Baptist and all who's watching online. We're going to sing this morning of God's love and how it never fails. The song's called Your Love Never Fails. for me every day your love never fails you stay the same you stay the same through the ages your love never changes there may be pain in the night but joy comes in the morning when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid Because I know that you love me Your love never fails The wind is strong and the water's deep But I'm not alone open seas your love never fails the chasm is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side your love never fails you stay the same the ages your love never changes there may be pain in the night the joy comes in the morning when the oceans rage I don't have to be afraid cause I know that you love me your love never fails Your love never fails I'm going to sing you make all things work together for my good All things work together for my good And you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. When the ocean rain. to be afraid because I know that you love me your love never fails your love never fails
Amen. Thank you, Walt. Praise team. What a beautiful reminder this morning of our, our good God. He is so good to us, and he loves us. I hope when you came in, you picked up, um, I've got one down here somewhere. You picked up a little packet. Uh, if you do not have one, if you'll lift your hands, and one of the ushers will bring, okay, I got one down front. <laughs> One down front. I had some for you back there, but uh, somebody fell down on the job giving those out, Corey. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't. All right. This is what we'll use a little later on when we partake of the Lord's Supper. And uh, if you're at home, I hope you have one. If not, you can you can get you a cracker and some juice, or you can a um, uh, piece of bread and some juice or some Coke, or coffee, or whatever. Uh, you know, it's not, there's nothing magical about the elements that we partake of. It's the symbolism, what it means, the, um, the, the blood and the, the body of our Lord that was shed for us. And that's, I'm looking forward, it's been a long time since we've been able to have the Lord's Supper. I'm looking forward to that this morning. I uh, do welcome you to Robert L. Baptist Church. Those who are here, those who are joining us online, we welcome you as well. Hope that you will um, uh, feel right at home as you worship with us today. And we appreciate so much uh, Walt and our praise team for sharing with us. I uh, want to encourage you to join us again on Wednesday evening, which will be online only. Uh, we are studying the book of Galatians uh, in our midweek devotion at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings. And you can find that on our church Facebook page or our church website. There's a link uh, that you can click on to go directly to the service Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Also, our Sunday school classes are meeting through Zoom and Facebook and different different online platforms. If, uh, if you haven't been meeting with your class, talk to your teacher. Find out if they're uh, still meeting, how so. If not, uh, there are several classes that are that you're welcome to, to be a part of that meet at different times throughout the week. There are some that meet early Sunday mornings, some that meet... Um, our class, the class that I'm part of, we meet at 5 o'clock on Sunday. So uh, there's several options if you'd like to join a Sunday school class. It's a great time to do so, and it's, it's very uh, helpful in our Christian walk to be a part of a class that encourages us, uh, supports us, prays for us, prays with us, and just uh, helps us to see what God's Word has to say to us for our daily lives. Um, this time, uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to just give you a couple of updates, first of all. Uh, we're so happy to see Kathy with us today. Glad that she's doing better back at work and just strong, and, and she's getting there anyway. <laughs> Slowly, but she's getting strong. Um, Bob Nelson's home, uh, improving. Also, uh, Billy Bostick is home, and uh, Billy is going to have to have his gallbladder removed in a few weeks uh, as soon as he gains a little strength. So he's got a drain tube till then. But, um, and after his gallbladder is removed and he recovers from that, he'll be able to go back on his chemo. So I uh, want to keep Billy lifted up. He's got a lot going on. He's very weak. Um, also, Crystal Ward. Crystal came home after about three weeks up at Chapel Hill. Uh, she was doing better. She's had to make a couple of trips back to the hospital for some procedures uh, since then. Um, and we want to just keep her lifted up. She's still having a lot of trouble. Uh, so we want to want to keep Crystal in our prayers as well. Let's take a few moments now and go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we do recognize that there are many uh, who are sick, and we are thankful for those who are recovering from various illnesses and, and procedures, Lord, and we pray that they would... Uh, regain their strength completely and, and quickly, Lord. We pray for all those who are grieving, particularly here in our community, uh, after the, the tragedy involving one of our young people this weekend here in uh, Richmond County. We just pray for a family, for all the students and teachers and everyone who, who loved that young man and knew him. Father, we pray that you would help us all to, to be source of inspiration to one another to encourage each other to 
to offer what kind of support, whatever kind we're able to give. Lord, we pray now that in this time of worship, as we come to the Lord's table to partake of the Lord's Supper, we pray that you would help us to just put aside all other cares and focus entirely upon Jesus and what you've done for us through him. We would rededicate ourselves to being the kind of people you want us to be. Not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesday nights, but, but every day and every moment. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for loving us, most of all for Jesus. And we make this prayer in his name. Amen. This next song. Uh, I think is very relevant relevant in the time that we're living right now. It's called We Believe. It's such an anthem to sing that we believe in God, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, the death, the resurrection, and what he's done uh, for our lives and all humanity. This song's called We Believe. And he 
he's coming back, he's coming back again, yeah, he's coming back again, we believe, we Amen. We believe. I'm I'm so glad that you sang that song this morning, Walt, and and not just uh, the words of the song, but the but the pronoun we, not just I, but we, and and that's what I want to talk a little bit about this morning before we partake of the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. So I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to John 17, John chapter 17. I'll begin reading at verse 20. One thing that we all are invited to do today, and this includes those watching online that that would like to, sometime between 12 and 1, come drive through the the carport over here on the side of the church and wish Austin farewell as he goes off to college. We're going to miss Austin. Austin does a lot around here, and we're just so thankful for him and uh, not just his expertise and Uh, in so many areas of technical and musical um, abilities, but but the fact that he's willing to give of himself, you know, and, and, and it takes parents who raise children who don't have a choice but to give in the beginning, who grow to understand that as a Christian, it's our duty to give, that it's our duty to serve, that that it's our privilege more than anything to serve. And so, Austin, we love you and we appreciate you, brother. And we're going to miss you. And we want you to come home and see us as much as you can. <laughs> okay. John chapter 17. I'm going to begin reading with verse 20. Read just verses 20 and 21. But I invite you to stand with me in honor of the reading of God's word as you're able to do so. John 17, this is in red in my Bible, so that means this is is Jesus speaking, actually part of his prayer. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So he's not just praying for his disciples right there, right then, but he's praying for those who will believe later, which is us, okay? For those who will believe in me through their word. Of course, that's the command right there he's given to his disciples that he gives to all of us later to share, to spread his word. Verse 21 says, That they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word. You may be seated. I recently read about a lady who, who got on a bus headed south from a city up north. And one of her neighbors also got on the bus at the same stop. And she made her way down the aisle and, and sat next to her. And they began to chat about where they were going and, and what they were going to be doing there. And the second lady asked the first, So how long will you be away before returning home? And the first lady replied, I don't know. The second lady said, well, You're so lucky. You're so lucky. I wish that I was free to go as I choose. When I choose, where I choose, stay as long as I want and come home when I choose. And the first lady began to cry. And through her tears, she said, that's what makes this trip so terrible. I don't know when I'm coming back. 
because I don't have to come back. She said, nobody needs me here. My husband has died. My children are grown. I'm free to come and go as I please, but I don't want to. I feel like I need other people, but nobody needs me. She no longer had responsibilities to others. Obligation to family. And believed, therefore, that no one needed her. Now, aside from the obvious, and that is a relationship with Jesus, every person has two fundamental needs in life. One is a need to be an individual, to learn to stand on one's own feet. A person can never be a responsible member of a community until he or she is first an individual and they know who they are in God. But there's another equally important need and it's to learn to be a member of a community, of a family. No person is very happy who hasn't been able to develop both. So it seems fitting on this communion Sunday that we should think about our need for both. Our need to understand who we are as individuals and our need for each other. And since the beginning of this, this pandemic, there's no doubt that the isolation of individuals who live alone has been extremely damaging to so many. Suicides, addictions, depression, just plain old loneliness have all skyrocketed among people who not too long ago seemed very happy and well-adjusted individuals. It's been especially detrimental to those people who were already living on the fringes. Those people who were, who were already in a fragile state. See, Jesus established his kingdom in the hearts of men and women who understood that they were bound to each other because they were bound to him. They had the horizontal relationships because of the vertical relationship. He promises in his word when he tells us of the coming of the Holy Spirit that his power and presence of the Holy Spirit can only be realized when we as his people are united. The burden of his prayer right after the Last Supper, right before he went to the cross, just hours before he went and suffered for you and me. His burden to the Lord, God above, was that they all may be one. That's what was on his mind. That you and I and all Christians for all time would be united in our faith. He wanted to, to bring people together. That's why he came. See, without unity, he knew that his kingdom would not stand. He wanted people to be united in, in brotherhood. Unlike a unity that can be had anywhere else through any other bonds. Fellowship that would make it appear that heaven had come down to earth. In other words, the, the kingdom of God is not made up of one of these and one of those and one of those over there. The kingdom of God is made up of a family. The family of God. We are one. There was an interesting study conducted by a well-known doctor a number of years ago. It was done among a thousand people who had attempted suicide. 
And the doctor listed some facts about each of those people. He found that more men than women who had been successful when they attempted suicide were those who didn't have any strong ties to other people or groups of people. But I think one of the most interesting revelations of that study was that Protestant Christians were more likely to commit suicide than Catholics or Jews. And his conclusion was that Protestant Christians don't have the same sense of belonging when it comes to a larger group, when it comes to being a part of community. Not like the Catholics, not like the Jews. One of the deep hungers in every human being is for fellowship, for friendship. For friendly associations. They say that solitary confinement is the worst kind of punishment in a prison. Not because it subjects a person to a diet of bread and water, but because it puts a person all to himself. Few of us can stand to be alone for very long. This is one of the reasons that Many people like that first lady I mentioned in the, on the bus. One of the reasons people like her become depressed. Lose their sense of purpose when they lose those family connections. In a book from the Second World War, Out of the Night, Jan Walton tells of a personal experience he had in a German concentration camp with other political prisoners. Many of those other prisoners were communists. One of the prisoners betrayed a secret to a guard, a secret of another prisoner. And after that, every prisoner found, who found out shunned that man. He suddenly found himself shut off from all communication with the other prisoners. It was like being on an island alone when his soul was thirsting for fellowship. In desperation, one day, that prisoner threw himself against a guard and begged to be shot. See, to live amid such isolation was too much for him. He preferred death to such an existence. Nothing compares to the inspiration of knowing that our lives are bound to others. We're part of something bigger than ourselves. Deep in our souls, we have a longing to live together happily with others. It's risky. It can get really messy when we trust other people. But it's what we desire. Unfortunately, often pride and stubbornness, resentment, and an unforgiving spirit can erect insurmountable barriers. Barriers that keep us apart. Even from people we care about. How many tears have been shed over those we've become separated from? Yet we know that we love them and we need to be loved by them. Jesus wants us together. He felt compelled before he went to the cross to pray to God that he would keep us together. He And the Father, their relationship as one would be an example for us. That we would be one as well. Almost the first words a child learns are some variety of the singular 
form of the personal pronoun I. I, me, my, mine. We hear it often from children. Unfortunately, many of us adults have never learned to say us, our, and we with any kind of conviction. For many, it's always my job, my house, my wife, my husband, my kids, my town, my church. It may sound insignificant, but this reflects the fact that so many have failed in becoming individuals and have never really achieved any real connections with the community of which we're a part. It takes a person who is inwardly secure and emotionally mature to grow into us, we, and our. I think it was intentional. I know it was. When Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, taught us to pray our Father, our daily bread, our trespasses, our trespassers, lead us not into temptation. Jesus told us to pray this, not just when we gather together, but in our private prayer closets as well. To pray in the plural first person. This is deeply relevant in our world today. See, our task is not just to feel as though we're right with God. We must also be right with one another. That won't happen until we begin to pray not as individuals, but as individuals who are part of something. Something bigger, a fellowship, a family, community. We need to move from the singular to the plural. From I to we. Someone once said, and I believe it's very applicable to this, that a barefoot shoe salesman is not a very good shoe salesman. A barefoot shoe salesman is not a very good shoe salesman. We were not created to live in solitary confinement. We were created to be part of a family, community. We're not saved into isolation. It's one of the great tragedies of the world that the gospel of Jesus Christ should ever be a source of division instead of unity. It should always bring us together. But it seems that the gospel tends to divide people rather than unite them. We miss the central importance of life, at least of life in Christ, when we fail to see that Jesus came into the world so that we would be one in Him. When the ancient Hebrews missed the opportunity that God gave them to be a community, to be a family of God, they forfeited the right to be the apostles of salvation to the rest of the world. But we too have dangerously neglected and obscured the truth. We're not just to be certain that we're right with God. We're not just to be certain that others are right with God. We also have to be right with each other. The thief on the cross, I think, is a good image of someone who got right with God. Just in time, but he got right with God. He didn't have time to get right with anybody else. But he got right with God. But I think of the prodigal son as someone who not only got right with God in that moment, 
But he also got right with the other people in his family. Think of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus saw God through Christ. And here's what he said. He said, Lord, if I've taken anything unjustly, I'll pay it back four times. That's after I give half of what I have to the poor. However, we have lived our lives. Even in light of God's love and, and our constant desire to be right with Him, have we been careful to be right with others? How often have we missed the truth that our salvation is not just between us and God, but it's revealed in our relationships with others. This is the basis for evangelism, you know. Evangelism in its most basic form says God loves you. We love you. And we want you to know that there's a place for you in God's family, in our family. That's evangelism. See, the church was never intended to be a collection of people who were just lightly held together in an organization. The church is meant to be a family of God's people. As Paul put it, a colony of heaven. Colony of heaven. Sometimes we get a glimpse of this. Many times it, is, it seems, though, that we allow our differences to be bigger than what we have in common. We allow our differences to divide us. When that happens, we go our separate ways and a lot of people get hurt as a result. The measuring rod of discipleship, as Jesus gave it, is not whether a person is doctrinally sound. Hear what I'm saying? His measuring rod is this. That you love one another as I have loved you. Until we can get that right, it doesn't matter what we believe. Because we're not having much of an impact for God. If we can't love our brothers and sisters in Christ... Nobody wants to hear what we have to say. And all they'll see is that division. His measuring rod for the church is not whether we're large or small, not whether we're many or few, but the degree to which we come to be one with God and with each other. When we take the elements of the Lord's Supper today, Let's not focus on the taste of the bread or the juice or on the method in which we're forced to, to peel off the little tabs to take these individual elements. Instead, let's do so with the prayer of our Lord ringing in our hearts. Let us truly desire to be one with God and with each other. Let us be conscious of the spiritual presence of our brothers and sisters in Christ. People who also love the Lord with the same sincerity and truth as we do. Let's leave the sanctuary today committed completely to our biblical task of bringing all people into the redeeming, restorative family of Christ. Would you bow with me at this time and join me in sincerely reciting the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, let's say it, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Your heads bowed. Do you mean that? Do you mean every word of it? If so, then you're, you're on your way to unity. You're on your way to, to being right, not just with God, but with others as well. This morning, we're going to gather at the Lord's table. We're going to partake of the elements of the Lord's Supper in just a few moments. The Bible tells us that before we do, we should examine ourselves. That we not sit at the Lord's table in an unworthy fashion. We celebrate an open table. Anyone who claims Christ as Savior is invited to join us in this celebration this morning. You don't have to be a member of this church. But if you're a member of God's family, we encourage you to join us. Before we do, I want to invite you right where you sit and spend some time reflecting on who you are with God. On your relationship to Him. Your unity with Him. But go beyond that. Your unity with other believers. The Bible reminds us that we can't love God and hate our brothers and sisters. It's impossible. We can't do it. Is there something you need to confess to God this morning? You can do it right where you sit right now. Or in just a moment when our praise team leads us in another song. You can come down. You can kneel at this altar and get things right with God. If you need someone to pray with you, you can come and I'll pray with you. If you have a decision to make for Christ, you can come and do that. Make a public profession of your faith or renew your commitment to Him. You can come and unite with this church. Whatever need you have, I want to invite you to come in just a moment. Heavenly Father, give us now the courage we need and the obedience we need to do whatever it is you're calling each and every one of us to do this morning. As individuals, as a group, as a family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whatever your need this morning, you come. Savior say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left him Crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power in thine alone can change the leper spots and the heart of stone Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Just died my 
so to say My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain you to take out your, your elements for the Lord's Supper. Notice there are two tabs. Um, I want to lift the, the very thin tab at the top and separate it from the thicker tab, which has just the, the clear cellophane, and pull it back, and that will open up to you the wafer we will first receive or throw whichever the case may be reading from God's word 1 Corinthians chapter 11 the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for bread that sustains our bodies. Most importantly, we thank you for the bread of life. Your son, Jesus Christ. For the, the torment and brokenness that he endured on our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen body of our Lord, let us take it together. Now if you reach down all the way and pull the, the thicker tab very carefully back, that will reveal the juice. Paul writes, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Almighty Father, we thank you for the cup which represents the blood that our Lord shed on that cruel cross. Blood that covers every sin of every human. We thank you and we praise you Jesus.
Amen. The blood of our Lord, through which we have the forgiveness of sins, let us drink together. And there'll be a receptacle out front if you want to um, dispose of this before you leave. There'll be a trash can out there behind that. Um, okay, you got it. Um, there also will be a benevolence offering received. Um, there are four offering plates placed around at each of the exits, wherever you, whichever way you came in. Uh, if you'd like to give to the benevolent offering, uh, that goes in the offering plates. Your regular tithes and offerings go in the box out front. I'm going to ask Pastor Jason to come now and lead us in our closing. As always, it's good to see you all here able to worship together and those online. Uh, we do have a big week starting up. We have our preschool uh, starting up, and uh, we're pretty full. Uh, we're going to be having a little different uh, drop-off uh, plan and a pickup plan. Uh, so uh, during the times of 8 and 11.30, 11.45, you may see a lot of vehicles in here. We have 70-ish kids and 70-plus kids, so uh, it's going to be a lot more activity. Uh, so we just, uh, we're excited about what the Lord's doing. Uh, pray for Randy, our director, and the rest of the teachers. Uh, that'll be helping that out, along with all the other teachers that are out there uh, and things, a lot of uh, prayer needs for that. And uh, just looking for a good year uh, starting up. If there's a way that you'd like to volunteer, uh, we have uh, a few different ways that you could volunteer through the preschool, but you need to check with Randy on that and uh, whether you want to come in and read or something. Uh, we do have the distancing thing, but you can still do some things. So uh, just check with us, and we'll be glad to plug you in. Uh, right after service, uh, kind of a little bittersweet there, buddy, but uh, Austin Hattinger, he's going to be out there at the – uh, fellowship hall drive through area and uh, it's kind of his official send off last Sunday before he goes off to college and get smarter get learned a little better there and uh, we uh, we do appreciate all that he does around here and he'll still do that somewhat uh, so we're not gonna let him off the hook completely uh, but we're gonna do like one of those drive-by wave by things so uh, if you want to uh, yell something at him as you go by wave at him encourage him uh, he'll be out here and just drive through the fellowship hall driveway there or buy it on the road, honk, wave. Uh, I know he'll appreciate that because he really loves attention, guys, really. <laughs> A very fitting service about wanting to be together and having people around you. That's, that's Austin through and through. Now that I made him red as can be, let me stop before I ruin it. And uh, let's pray together. And uh, again, it's good to be with you all today. Father God, thank you for what you do. Lord, we, we thank you that you loved us so much, Lord, that you sent your son. Lord, for these days that we can, uh, we always need to remember what you've done for us. But Lord, especially these days when we uh, partake of these sacraments, Lord, and be able to do this, Lord, in remembrance of you. Lord, in remembrance of what you've done for us. And Lord, that you have given us a responsibility, not just to ourselves and to you, but Lord, to others to be able to spread the word, to spread the love, and to encourage and lift up one another. So, God, I pray we can do that. Lord, I know we have many prayer needs. Lord, we've heard and seen you answer prayer. But, Lord, there's uh, still needs out there with uh, uh, some of our, our own people, Lord. And we just pray that you just uh, continue to bless and guide and direct and heal and uh, help recover these, Lord, uh, that need that, that touch from you. Lord, for these that are uh, feeling extremely lonely, Lord, uh, we know we have a, a family in our, in our community, Lord, that's suffering a great loss, and we just uh, lift up the David family to you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray you just uh, uh, help us, Lord, to be able to, to love in the right way, Lord, uh, to be able to 
to say the yeses and the noes where they need to, and Lord, uh, always lifting you up in our life. Lord, uh, we think of these that are going, uh, that are started college already, going to college. We think of Austin. Well, we just thank you for uh, his ministry, Lord, here. And uh, we just pray you just let him be a, a lighthouse as he goes out. Lord, the, the others that are uh, from our church that are in college, Lord, they've reached out, Lord, and they have needs as well. Uh, different situation for everyone, Lord. And we just uh, lift these up to you. For a preschool starting up, we pray that that will go well tomorrow. Pray for our, our leaders and teachers and our, our children and the families involved. Thank you for growing that ministry, God. And uh, just uh, continue to bless us and guide us and have your will done in our lives. And we ask this in your name. Amen.